Yeah, Black Sabbath, I think, are the most powerful best there with Neon Nights. An unmistakable sound, and that single, of course, from last year. Well, in the moment, you'll have the chance to win autographed copies of their latest album, Heaven and Hell, and several tracks from that very album are coming up right now, because last Sunday night, Graham Neal, who at the moment is off to the Playhouse to see Godspell, caught up with the ex-Rainbow and now Sabbath frontman Ronnie James Dio. And they began by discussing the motives behind that surprising move from the colours of the rainbow to the black of Sabbath. Being dissatisfied with, with the personal things that were going on uh, and also the musical direction that the band was taking, uh, I felt that the band was getting a little bit over-commercialized. We, we began the project Rainbow, Richie and I, uh, intending to make it different than what he had done before and what I had done before. And I think we kind of achieved that within the first few albums. And then uh, with all the people whispering in our ears saying it must be a little bit more commercial, you won't sell any singles. Well, I really didn't care. I don't think Richie did for a while, but then he started believing what people were telling him. Uh, and we got to the point where there was just complete lack of communication at all and we just felt it best that, uh, that we go our separate ways which we did and obviously I wasn't the only one Cozy's now left and, uh, and we went through so many changes in that band anyway um, but when I did leave to probably answer a question that you may ask which is why the Black Sabbath thing um, I wanted to be sure that my next venture was going to be with people that I liked and people that I could get along with on a, on a very equal personal basis and these happened to be the, the lot that uh, filled that bill for me and then of course the music was uh, being as important but the most important thing was getting along personally that's the easiest way to create good music if you're happy and I'm happy now I'm just glad it all came about it did come about by the way with uh, first by meeting Tony uh, and then he he introduced me to uh, to Terry and Bill Yep. And from there, it was just a, a lot of conversation and a little bit of playing and a decision to, to carry on with Black Sabbath, and that's what we did. I'm happy now because we've heard so many rumors about splits, even now, in that Black Sabbath have got people coming and going. Is it a happy band and a permanent band? Yes, it is. Uh, the reasons for the comings and goings, uh, there's only been one other change beside myself, and that's the drummer. Uh, and Bill Ward left uh, of his own volition. He felt that... Uh, Mentally, he was getting very overburdened. His uh, his mom and dad died within a space of about nine months of each other. They were very close, of course. He was living in the States, and he didn't get to see them very much. And when they did pass away, uh, it was quite a blow to him. We were on the road at the time. Um, we were in the studio when his mom died. Uh, he, had to, he had to leave the tour twice in America because he just uh, really mentally couldn't take it. And he came to us and said, look, I just really don't think I can go on anymore. Could we stop for a while? And we did stop for a while. And then he said, I really don't want to carry on. I'll give you some suggestions for drummers. And he suggested Vinny. He's our drummer now. And uh, we still have a very close relationship with Bill. We care about Bill as much as we ever did. And Bill cares about us as much as he ever did. Um, I'm sure it looks as though it's one of those uh, who's going to be next situations. But it's it only... does seem to be. With sure. The well, it, it's only because uh, Bill needed to get away from it. Uh, he need, needed to clear the cobwebs. And we, of course, couldn't afford uh, financially or from uh, a sixth standpoint to stop in midstream because it was a replacement year for... The this band, it was the, the band's uh, kind of rising from the ashes, so to speak. And we, if we stopped, I think that would have uh, halted uh, the impetus that we had going for us. And we didn't want to stop that success. And Bill agreed that we should carry on, and so we did. And it's not a matter of anyone else going to and leaving. There's no more chopping and changing. This will be permanent, we hope. Now a full piece. Do you still have a keyboard player on stage? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have. Uh, we use Jeff Nichols, who is uh, uh, the keyboard player on the album on Heaven and Hell, and uh, Jeff will remain with us uh, as a keyboard player. We consider ourselves to be a four-piece band because Sabbath has always been that. But Jeff's contribution uh, has been that, that great filling sound of uh, the keyboard to give Tony a lot more latitude as a guitar player. He doesn't really have to be a chord player and a lead player all at the same time. Not that he couldn't do it because he's done it for 10 years now, but uh, Jeff is also one of those very personable people that we felt uh, we needed around us. So we like to, uh, again, going back to the original thing, we were very, very close, and Jeff is close to us as well. Uh, so it just is a very ha happy group, and we like to keep it that way. So what would be the problem of having a five piece? Do you feel it would destroy the image that people have built of the summers over the years? I think it would if we had anyone else other than Jeff under the circumstances. Uh, Jeff happens to be a guitar player first and a keyboard player second, but he's uh, been willing to relegate himself to just being the keyboard player who poises his fingers over the keys and plays what we basically want him to play. 
uh, without uh, demanding a spotlight or demanding more than we want to give it. The, again, the idea is that Sabbath is a guitar-oriented band, uh, a power tr musical trio with a vocalist, and that is what we think we should keep it. If we had, again, any other keyboard player, if we had Keith Emerson in here, I mean, it would be a completely <laughs> different band, you know. Got to be yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think because Jeff is what he is and because he plays the way he does, it enables us to remain the four-piece power guitar band with some some nice instrumentation from the keyboard. Is it a democratic four-piece these days? Do you have yes. all have evil say? Well, not really. Uh, it was when Billy was in the band. Uh, it was always a it was a, always a, de a democracy. Um, it's still a democracy between the three of us, Tony, Geezer, and myself. Uh, and only because we were the last remaining members of Sabbath after Billy left. Uh, I consider myself to be that. You know, luckily, even though it's only been two years for me, uh, so our democratic decisions are um, made by Tony and Terry and myself. And because we bear all of the expense, and we were the ones who went through the traumatic period of Ozzy leaving and uh, going out on the road, when we didn't know what the reaction was going to be, uh, we felt well, we're still Black Sabbath, so we'll let Vinnie play his drums for a while. And if, and if it becomes a, a four-way again, uh, that's in the future. Is that where the main problems within Rainbow? used to be in the sense that there's so many personalities and yet people like Richie of course would without doubt the boss. Well, Richie was the boss of the band. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. I mean, I wouldn't delude myself into thinking that even though he and I did form that band on an equal partnership, we were 50-50 members of that band. We wrote all the material together, 50-50. We shared in the profits and expenses, 50-50 anyone else who was in that band but Richie and so therefore his opinions and his judgment had to be respected and I did respect Richie's opinions and judgment um, but it was not a democratic very democratic situation at all when Cozy came in there started to be a lot of jockeying for position who was going to be number two we always we knew who number one was and I was number two till Cozy came in and Cozy and I went at who's going to be number two uh, but we remained good friends Cozy and I still are good friends uh, and that had nothing to do with the breakup at all any any kind of ego trips between us but it was not a democratic situation at all, no. It was more what Richie wanted to do, and the rest of us kind of grumbled and moaned, but we did it. Moving back, if we can, to venues like this. Tonight you're playing Bingley Hall, a packed crowd without doubt. It's the sort of venue that a lot of big bands these days are avoiding, and quite obvious reasons, because the sound is, no matter who's dire. in, dire. Right. You said it. Why do you sign to play it? We do have a lot of control over where we work, but we don't take a lot of active interest in it, in that we do hire management to do that job for us, and uh, we shouldn't hire him unless uh, we give him that kind of latitude. So we leave that to him and then via the promoter in this case uh, is John Curd, Straight Music, and they put the venues together. We had done a tour, of course, of Britain before, I think about six months ago. We didn't want to cover all the same ground that we did. We didn't play Stoke last time, we didn't play Preston last time, we did do Manchester and, and Birmingham, and we felt that to get some kind of a central location, which was Bingley Hall, to cover those areas that I mentioned that we didn't do, uh, made a lot of sense. Again, we didn't have control. This was presented to us after the tour was booked, you're playing Bingley Hall. Oh, well, okay. We'll play Bingley Hall. We'll play it because the kids can come to it. And because it is a big venue, one of the three or four big venues in this country, uh, the NEC had not been finished by the time this tour was booked. That's the reason we didn't do the NEC. Perhaps next time we will. Uh, I don't know whether it's a better venue for sound or not. I doubt very much if it is. Big places are just, just that, big echoey halls. Can you communicate on a whole list size? Yeah, I think so. I think the audience uh, communicate from back to front. I think there's just a string of emotion that goes from back to front, and they communicate that way to us. So the person in the front, by looking at him or speaking to him, I think you're actually communicating with that with the person in the back. The sound is a problem, uh, but I think under the auspices of Black, the Black Sabbath show, I mean, I'm sure they do listen to it, but it's it's the whole emotional flood that they feel and hear more than every single note that I sing or that Tony plays or that Terry plays or the drummer solo or whatever. We can talk briefly about the album Heaven and Hell. It's like a first album for this lineup, certainly. Very successful yes. Yes. album, without a doubt. It has been. I think it's great. How about you? I think it's brilliant. I really do. I'm very pleased with it. We've got greater heights to, to reach for now because we have we have the basis now of Heaven and Hell. It's been pro proven that the, that the, the band uh, under its its, its old uh, membership lineup was not the be all and end all of this band. It didn't mean that Sabbath stopped. Uh, so we did prove that point. The album, with its success, proved that uh, the band uh, could go out and make competitive music again. There was a bit of a lull there because uh, I think of 
the non-contribution of, of members who will go anonymous at this particular point. Uh, and that made it kind of all fall apart. So all of us believed in what we were doing with Sabbath. We believed uh, very strongly in the music we were making, the songs we were writing, and the way we put it down. Again, going back to the production. Um, and its success has not been surprising to any of us at all. And that's not an, e not an ego talking. I mean, we thought it was a very good album when we did it. And the strange thing is you've done well. Ozzy's done well on his own as well. Yeah, it's good for him, you know. Great for him. I mean, we've got, you know, no qualms about uh, uh, Ozzy's success. Ozzy's, su Ozzy's success doesn't mean that our success is any less or vice versa. His failure or our failure doesn't mean anything uh, to him. You know, I hope he does very well. Uh, our communication with Ozzy is, is nil. We, we have none at all. Uh, and Bob Daisley, who was a bass player in Ozzy's band, was, of course, a Rainbow member. I and mean, he's was an old friend. Good for Ozzy. I hope he does well. Being very honest about it, Ronnie, how do you feel about singing the very old Sabbath numbers that you no doubt got to do for the show for the kids? I think it's something that really had to be done, and I don't mind doing them at all. I've, we've chosen the songs uh, that the kids liked, and I think the songs that the kids liked are the songs that I liked. So I enjoyed them. I enjoy very much doing the song Black Sabbath. I like doing Iron Man. I like doing Paranoid, even though they were not songs that had my mark on them. Uh, I think I've tried to, to keep true to, to what the songs were in the beginning, uh, not to uh, over-flatter them with vocals, just to keep them true to what they were. That's what the kids deserve to hear, not not me going off on some incredible tangent and trying to show that uh, you know I can sing better than I was here, sing higher or lower or whatever. So, you know, it, it's... For me, it's, it's been fun. I enjoy, I enjoy doing it. I really do. And you now feel a definite member of the new oh, band? Oh, absolutely. I did as soon as I first joined the band because it was my input as well as theirs. It was my input as a songwriter, my input as, a, as the, the vocalist in this band, as a songwriter in this band as well, uh, as, a, as a maker of decisions as well as Terry and uh, Tony and Billy when Bill was in the band. I do feel 100% part of this band. Yes. Have a good show, Ronnie. Have a good tour, in fact. Thanks. Can we finish with your favorite track from the album? My favorite track of the album is Heaven and Hell.